Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Siri, is it going to rain today? There's no rain in the forecast for today. Here I am in Goa, India, on vacation, and what you're getting is the re-release of this podcast. This podcast is about the Pebble system, the Pebble system that we use for sales pages. Now, when I started writing sales letters, I wasn't very good at them. Most people aren't when they start out. What I did was I deconstructed sales letters. I would take a marker and I would go through some of the sales letters that really appealed to me. And I found that they triggered off certain emotions. They caused me to buy at specific points in time, or rather they caused me to want to buy at certain points in time. And I remember, even though I was earning less than $1,500 a month at that point in time, I was willing to go to Los Angeles for this workshop where each seat was $5,000. And that's not counting the airfare and all the other expenses. You can write a great sales page by understanding how the customer thinks. And the customer thinks in steps. And this is why you need to have pebbles at your disposal. So let's find out what these pebbles are all about and why you can use pebbles to write some great sales pages. This is the three-month vacation, and I'm Sean D'Souza. Every evening at about twilight in New Mexico and Arizona, thousands of bats stream out from caves. And one of the most famous of them all, at least among biologists, is the Mexican free-tailed bats, because they're known for their hunting sprees. So like all animals, bats communicate with each other. But these Mexican free-tailed bats, they not only communicate, they also confuse. Aaron Cochran is a biologist who's at the Wake Forest University, and he was studying the hunting habits of Mexican free-tailed bats in Arizona and also in New Mexico. And what he found was that his ultrasonic equipment was picking up two completely different sounds. When the free-tailed bat was trying to communicate, it was one sound, and then, the moment they had competition in the area, they would send out a sound that was totally different. What these bats were doing was jamming the signals of other bats. So usually when a bat is hunting, what it does is it sends out a signal. It sends out what is called a feeding buzz, and that bounces off the prey, and then they know, hey, it's time for dinner. But what these free-tailed bats were doing was jamming the signals, and it reduced the capability of the competition from capturing moths. It went down from 65% to 18%. This confusion, this reduced capability, is a lot like what happens on our sales pages. When we're trying to write sales pages, we're trying to get too much information across, and it sounds like there is one buzz and a second buzz, and now there is confusion, and we miss the point. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to stick to the point and we're going to use pebbles. We're going to use pebbles to figure out how we get to exactly what we want to say to the client and then how we continue to say that over the rest of the sales page. So the three things that we're going to cover are, one, we find the confusion. The second is we use the pebbles and the third is we expand each issue. Let's start out with the first one, which is finding the confusion on your sales page. Mm -hmm. 
So about two weeks ago, I was on Facebook and I learned a lot through Facebook, despite what I say. Yet, I was watching this video by this conductor called Alondra de la Parra. And I was so taken by this video that I saw on Facebook that I went to YouTube. And on YouTube, there she was, directing the Paris Orchestra. And one of the songs that really got to me, one of the pieces of music that really got to me, was Huapango. So I started listening to Huapango and then to another piece and another piece and another piece. And before I knew it, I had three albums of Alondra de la Parra. And of course, I was driving Renuka crazy because I was playing this music all day long. Now, the interesting thing about this music is it's classical music. And like a lot of classical music, it requires an orchestra. And an orchestra is complete confusion if you let it be. And that's what a conductor does. A conductor has to stand up there and somehow know that music in advance and push and pull so that instead of cacophony, we have music. We have this beautiful sounding orchestra all playing together, but somehow separately at the same time. And your sales page is not different. It's got to have all of this information. But it's got to play something louder than the other. And this is why you have to first find the confusion, because when you find the confusion, you know exactly what's driving the sales page crazy. And the answer is usually with the clients. When you ask your clients questions about why do you choose our business, they don't tend to use a single word or a single phrase. What they do is give you a line and that causes total confusion. So let me read you a line from the running coach. Now, we're talking about head coach Ken Rickerman, and he runs 5speedrunning.com, and he teaches people how to run faster and better and with fewer injuries. And, of course, he'll go and he'll speak to a client, and he'll ask them, what is it that drives you to come to 5speedrunning.com? And, of course, they'll give their response, and it sounds like this. I want to move more freely, I want to go longer on the runs, and I want to improve my form. And the question is, does that help? And it doesn't help, because when you look at it, there are three points there. One is move more freely, second is longer runs, and the third is improve form. It sounded like a single sentence, but there are three whole topics in there, and that's what we have to do. First, we have to find the confusion. And in that single line, there is enormous amounts of confusion. You can't write a sales page or you can't write an email if you're trying to cover three points at the same time. You have to cover one point, just like this podcast. We're going to cover three points, but hey, let's start off with the first point. Let's go into a lot of detail with the first point. And then we'll go to the second point detail with the second point, and then we go to the third point. And this is how we do stuff, or we should do stuff, but instead we end up like those Mexican free tail bats, and <laughs> there's all this confusion, because we're trying to cover all of it together, because it seems like one sentence. And so we take that sentence, and we break it down into bullet points, and that's how you sort out any confusion. Take the sentence from your client, whatever that might be, and then break it up into bullet points. And once you break it up into bullet points, you will see very quickly that, hey, there are four or five points here, or there are two or three points here, but there is almost never one point. And that's where the confusion lies. So first step, 
make sure that you break up the sentences into bullet points. That takes us to the second step where we start using the pebbles. As you know, we take three months off every year. So we work for three months and then we take a month off. And for at least two of those months, we travel internationally. So we'll go to places like the Netherlands or Japan or Sardinia. And when people ask me, well, which is your favorite city? That's not a fair question to ask because every city is completely different and the people are different and the food is different and the experience is different. But even so, you could specifically ask me, here are three cities, like three bullet points, and now can you allocate pebbles to them? So if we took three cities like Amsterdam and Kyoto and Cagliari, then I could allocate pebbles. Because when you rank cities, it's very difficult. You could say, well, Kyoto is one, Cagliari is two, Amsterdam is three. But that doesn't give us a sense of weight. And what gives us a sense of weight is the pebble system. And the pebble system is very simple. If you said, okay, now allocate 10 pebbles. You've got 10 pebbles and you have to allocate them to these three different cities. And then Kyoto would get maybe four or five pebbles. because Kyoto is old Japan. It's got temples and shrines and gardens. It's got lots of ramen, lots of it. Great food, great people, and these amazingly sublime gardens where you can sit there for hours and do nothing, just like you would imagine Japan to be, this very quiet, non-hustle bustle place And in my ranking, Kyoto would get five pebbles. So now we have just five pebbles among the rest of the cities. And now we have Cagliari in Amsterdam. And Amsterdam is amazing. It's got lots of cheese. And Renuka loved that place more than any other place. But I would give Cagliari three pebbles and then Amsterdam two pebbles. And now we have a weighted system. We have this concept of Kyoto, five pebbles, Cagliari, three pebbles, and then finally we get to Amsterdam, which is two pebbles. And now if we have those three bullet points, we're clear which one is the most important. So when you look at what Ken had, he had move more freely, longer runs, and improved form. And longer runs got five pebbles. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with longer runs. The next thing was improve form that got three pebbles and finally move more freely got two pebbles. So now what we have with this pebble system is clarity. We know that the most important thing for that runner is for longer runs. So we're going to deal with longer runs on our sales page. So for now, we totally abandon the other two, which is move more freely and improve form. And we focus on the problems that runners have with longer runs the injuries it causes, all that stuff, but only with longer runs. And then you're able to get that message across very clearly. And you might never have to go to point two and point three, because as Ken mentioned, with a longer run, you get tired, you get physically exhausted, you lose focus, you get aches and pains, you have oxygen problems, you go out of breath, and then finally you lose motivation and confidence. So there is a lot of stuff to cover with just one topic, as you can see. And what we do on the sales page is do the Mexican free tail <laughs> dance. And we try and put all the points together when this one point itself could drive half the sales page. So imagine yourself as a client, you get there, you're having trouble with longer runs, and you see so much information in the form of a sales page about longer runs and that's when you realize my goodness this guy knows exactly what he's talking about this is the stuff that is of interest to me instead of all of this confusion and all of these bullet points bouncing back and forth 
What we've covered so far is we've found the confusion, then we started using the pebbles, and now we're going to expand the issue. So yes, we're on the third and final part of this podcast. Let's expand the issue, shall we? Let's go back for a minute to Alondra de la Parra, and there she is in front of this orchestra, and there is this accordion. Now this is a different piece altogether, not Huapango, but in this accordion we have the analogy that we need to understand how you expand that one point. In the last section, we looked at this one concept of longer runs. And what we have to ask are three questions. The first is, what does the solution look like? So when someone goes for a longer run, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? And the best thing to do is not to answer this question yourself, especially if you're writing the sales letter, because we're hopeless at writing sales letters. It's better to call up the client, get a recorder going, and ask them, what does it feel like? What does it look like? And they will give you two, three paragraphs. And then you ask that client the second question, which is, when it doesn't work out, how does it feel? What are the things that stop you, slow you down? And what they'll do is come up with that list. You know, I get tired, I lose focus, I lose motivation. But what they will do as well is they'll give you the words that you need to use on that page. So if you've got that recorder going, you'll find that the client is giving you the exact words and the exact feeling and the exact emotion that you want from them. But the most important thing for you to figure out at this point is that you stay on one point. So even when we have gone to just longer runs, we still have five subtopics under that, which is get tired, lose focus, aches and pains, can't catch breath, and then lose motivation. So we have five topics and you have to be very careful. You have to stick with one thing at a time. Among those five topics, which are the most important? And then you drive that, you address that one topic and then they answer in a paragraph. That paragraph goes on your sales page because they will tell you exactly how they feel, what's happening in their brain, and what's really important to them. So the client might say that the aches and pains are the most critical of all and that's where you start and then maybe they go to the fact that the aches and pains make them lose focus and then you continue down that path, let them speak for a while and you just have to transcribe. Maybe you have to tweak a little bit here and there, but most of the time you're just doing a transcription. And this is the beauty of the Pebble system. Instead of dealing with all of these things, we go down to one point. And from that one point, we get another five points. From those five points, we still have some level of ranking. In this case, you can have the ranking or the Pebbles all over again. And the client will explain to you how they feel and then you want to take that and put that on your sales page. But what about the other points, the move more freely and the improved form? Well, you can put that in your bullets. You don't have to put that in your main text. You can put that a lot later. What you're really trying to do is drive home one problem, and that is longer runs and what it means not to run that long. What are the consequences of not running that long? and then you bring up your solution. Introducing the long run system, and then you explain your solution. And how do you explain your solution? The client told you, remember? We asked them what did the solution look like. So in effect, the client is writing your entire sales page, but the critical thing is to use the Pebble system because the Pebble system allows you to focus. Otherwise, we have all this confusion, too much information, 
And when someone reads your sales page, they don't get a single message. We often try to write sales pages ourselves, and it's a big mistake. Even if you're a copywriter, it's a big mistake. The client can come up with terminology that you just cannot dream of because they live it and they breathe it and they feel it. And they have this specific information, the specific term that they want to use, and you want to use that on your sales page. And the best way to do it is to ask them. But first, you have to clarify. And while I'm talking about clarification, let me reiterate what we've covered in this episode. The first thing that we looked at was finding the confusion. We saw that it didn't matter what we were doing, there were several points that need to be covered. And what we're going to do is isolate them. We isolated them by using pebbles. And we then said, okay, five pebbles for this place, three for that, two for this. And the same thing applies to your website. There are all of these points, but you allocate pebbles. And then you take the one that got the most pebbles. And then you expand on them. And that was the third part. When you expand, you ask them, what does the solution look like? And let them talk and let them talk and let them talk. And you keep recording. You're the transcriber. You're the person asking the questions. Let them talk. And then you ask them what the problem looks like. And then they will give you four or five points. And you can ask them more details about those points. And now you have enough content to put on your page. But it's not just content, but emotion-filled content on that one single topic. And that is why the Pebble system is so powerful, because it helps the client focus, helps you focus, and you're able to create a much better sales page than just sitting at your computer and churning something out. So what's the one thing that you can do this week? The one thing that you can do is to help yourself find that confusion factor that you're dealing with every single day. Do this with your grocery list. Just take three items and then allocate those pebbles. This is five, this is three, this is two. And get into the habit of allocating for pretty much everything. And, you know, your to-do list looks a lot better when you allocate pebbles because you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. Siri, is it going to rain tomorrow? Yes, it's going to rain tomorrow. Is it going to rain the day after tomorrow? It sure looks like it's going to rain Thursday. It doesn't matter if Siri's right or wrong. We came here for the rain and we came here to relax and that's exactly what we're doing. What's happening in Psychotactics land? Something is happening, I'm sure, but I'm on vacation as you're listening to this podcast. And when I get back, we're going to have two courses. And the first course is going to be cartooning and that's tackled by Alison Beer. She's very good at it. She's run the course for two years in a row and it's a Da Vinci course. If you think that you can't draw cartoons, wait till you join this course. It's built to make you a great cartoonist. So that's the first thing. Psychotactics.com slash Da Vinci. D-A-V-I-N-C-I. And the second one is the headlines course where you learn to write hundreds, probably even a thousand headlines in less than eight weeks. You learn eight different ways to look at a headline, to audit it, to rewrite it. You will become so good at writing headlines, you'll wonder what the fuss is all about. What's the fuss about all of this testing of headlines and running this headline versus that headline? You will know instantly whether your headline is curious or not. You will know instantly if your client is going to click on the headline or not. Instead of wasting all of those hours on wondering, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Well, you'll know in minutes. The headline course starts on the 6th of September. You have to be a 5000 BC member if you want first preference. The Da Vinci course starts on the 22nd of August. Again, 5000 BC members get first preference. If there's still space left over, then you get to join the course. Now, when I say if there's still space left over, well, what I mean is literally that. Our courses are very small. Depending on the course, we'll take between 20 to 30 people. That's not a lot of seats to fill up, and that's why they get filled up in 15 to 20 minutes. 
we're not interested in 100 people. We're not interested in 50 people. We're not interested in 40 people. And certainly not those huge courses where everyone is a nobody. We want to make sure that you get a skill. And the reason why I do the courses, I conduct courses, is I learn a lot from them. So there's the cartooning course, the headlines course, and if you want to get to New Zealand, then there is also a course next year, but mostly it's about getting to New Zealand. So check that out as well. That's psychotactics.com slash x2017. That will get you all the way to New Zealand. Bye for now.